You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. Today's guest is Mike Post, hands down the most successful music composer in television history. Mike has two pieces of music playing every second of each day. What do you have for the future? Because I know that you're doing, I mean, it seems like you're doing so many things that at the same time you've always got something new. What are you looking at for the next five or ten years? Are you looking at slowing down or are you looking at putting on more projects and keep pushing it? Is there st- No, I'm not looking at pushing it. I'm looking at um, I'm looking at writing music when somebody wants me to write it. And I think the natural progression is that it has to slow down. Uh, it's been, you know, I've been doing this at such a uh, such a busy level compared to everybody else that does it. I mean, I have some very very talented friends that are that are really good at their job, and and you know a big deal to them is two shows. I mean they're they're busy if they're doing two shows a week, mm-hmm. and I haven't been under five six seven in so many years. It's just r- stupid, you know. It's just ridiculous. But eventually, the guys that that use me, the guys that that you know that I've had such success with all these years Stephen Boschko, Stephen Cannell, Dick Wolf eventually those guys get old too and and they want to slow down also the new guys that are coming up that are you know in their 30s and 40s that are producing new television shows they want guys their own age that they can relate to and they want guys they want something that they think is fresh and they may be right about that mm-hmm. so you know, I I've been on, I've been way on borrowed time for for you know, ten, fifteen, twenty years. Mm-hmm. Most guys stay successful at this thing I'm doing, you know, for maybe ten years. Maybe they squeak out fifteen, and they they either go away or do something else, or they retire. Or they go on to to features and they go on to do movies. And I don't want to do movies. I mean, that isn't my uh, my particular set of uh, personality traits. Don't lend itself, I think, real well to movies. You know, Um, and I'm 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 sort of built for TV. And one of the reasons is that I have the attention span of a gnat. And and TV, the first prerequisite is that it's on by nine. You know, you got to. It's got to be good, but you got to do it fast. And and I prefer to do it fast. I have this friend, famous friend named Randy Newman, who's a wonderful composer, a great composer. I mean, a world class composer, in my opinion. And Randy bleeds over every second. He and it sounds. It sounds like it. Not from the fact that it's. It's not wonderful and spontaneous, but it's perfect. His music is perfect, in my opinion. And he needs it and looks at it and goes back and checks it and says, well, now, okay, but let me exhaust every possibility. And he and I are like 180 degrees out of phase with each other. You know, I, I write it and don't even think about it. I mean, it's like, here, just go, go, you know. And, and I, he writes... He writes and orchestrates maybe a minute, minute and a half a day, and I do, you know, twenty minutes a day without even looking at it, you know, without blinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just shows that I'm I'm made for TV, and he's made for features. <laughs> so when we were talking earlier about now it's uh, it's time that you've been putting a lot into the music community and kind of giving back. Can you talk about that? Sure. A little bit. Sure. Um, for the first eighteen years of my compositional life, like. When I hooked up with Stephen Cannell, and and he came to me and said, you know, if we were friends before he had ever sold a script. And Steve Cannell came to me with this idea that he had this television show called Toma. He was going to first one he was going to be involved in producing. And he said, gee, I think your music would be great on it. And I said, well, gee, I, you know, I really don't know how to put music to to film. I said, but I have this friend of mine named Pete Carpenter. And uh, he's an older fella, and and he knows how to do that. He's done it a lot. Worked with a man named Earl Hagen, who is sort of the granddaddy of all TV composers. And I said, let me ask him if he wants to be involved in this. So he said, oh, sure. And he said, but I'm going to retire in a year or two. He he was 
six at the time. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, I've been working all my life. I'm, I'm, I've got a little place up in, uh, in Oxnard, and I'm, we're going to retire. And I said, okay, but why don't we do this thing together? You know, he said, great. Well, 18 years later, <laughs> and, and, and 2,000 hours of TV together, Pete Carpenter and I had done, you know, the Rockford Files, the 18 Wise Guy, Hard Castle McCormick, you know, blah, 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 on and on and on. And we had this great, great partnership. And he, we, there was never an unkind word between us, ne never a contract, handshake. And unfortunately, he was a, a, a generation ahead of me. and. And uh, life being the way it is, he passed away. So one of the things, one of the first things I did after he died uh, through BMI was to institute a fellowship in his name. And what we do is either students or people uh, in the music community make a, um, get a, a, a form that allows them to enter a competition mm -hmm. and the competition uh, is to write a one minute piece of music that has dramatic value and describe it and then a board of people a lot of former winners and myself sit down go through we get between 300 and 600 submissions every year and we usually pick one two three winners and each one of them comes for six they win some money and they come for six weeks and work with me for six weeks daily Hmm. And um, some of the people that have done it, eight of the people that have done it so far are huge in television and film doing the composition thing. So that that's, I guess you could call that a form of teaching, although I don't at all try and pass myself off as any sort of teacher or sensei to anybody. But I can, I can tell you how I do my thing and I can give you some advice on, on how you know how I've been able to pull it off and and I do that quite a bit I do that a tremendous amount then there's a there's some financial things that I wholeheartedly believe in um, and some programs that I that I try to support um, that further musical education and further um, instruments into uh, communities that you wouldn't normally think of as being uh, too involved in the arts, you know, lower economic communities that, you know, that are striving to feed their children and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, violin lessons are going to come way behind that. But somebody needs to take care of the spirit of young kids that are being raised without money. So I, I, I have a number of things like that that, that I try and uh, put some finances behind. Wow. Thanks for joining us today on Greater Good Radio. For more information or a transcript of today's show, please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. This is your host, Evan Leong and Carrie Leong, saying please join us next time for another episode of Greater Good Radio, Hawaii.